Friday night. Who? All right. You invite people? You, you, I mean, pound them. You got to be in that meeting. Find more people to tell. Somebody out there, you don't even know. Uh, uh, it's kind of hard not to know everybody in Pleasant Garden, isn't it? Do you know everybody in Pleasant Garden? Yeah. Oh. I figured you knew everybody around here. All right. Well, pound on everybody you do know. People you don't know. Run out there and when the male person comes by and says, hey. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's get them. Let's get them. Amen? All righty. All right. So that's two weeks from Friday night. Actually, they'll be, here, be in town two weeks from today. They're flying in early. So, um, do what? Flowers to hang around? Flyers. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I don't know if we have time to pull that off or not. Yep. I get the best thing would be is to have a, a something we can put out front on a stand. How much would that cost? How, much, how long could it take to get it? Yeah, you know, like a four by six or something like that, or six by four. Okay, have it delivered? Yeah, yeah. Send me some, send me some mock-ups, and all we got to do is go get three, a couple of those uh, green fits post things, tall ones, drive it to the ground, hang it on it, and there we go. And then later, we're going to put some posts in the ground with, with uh, eye bolts in it, and then we can just get more st and do stuff, all right? But for the, this, we do need that, so it'd be good to have it by Sunday. You can do it, can't you? In your spare time. Yeah. It's got, just got to be readable from driving by, not, you know, if it's too graphic -y. You know what I mean? If it's too graphic -y, it won't, you just can't, like, glance over there and see it. You'll have to. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't want him having a wreck looking at our sign. All right, let's go live. <clears throat> huh? I've been on the internet the whole time? You actually were broadcasting me doing all that. <laughs> Do what? Well, she's been living with you for all these years. Hi, guys. <laughs> They weren't supposed to have an in-house business floating around out there on the Internet. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Expedition Church of the Triad, located at 6302 Walter Wright Road in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. That is the intersection or the T-section of Hunt Road and Walter Wright Road, right across from Colonial Materials, if you know where that is, um, right outside, just right outside Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. 4.3 miles from Interstate 85 at the Elm Eugene exit. Praise the Lord. Love to have you join us, be with us, and we'd love to have you come to Shekinah Glory uh, this two weeks from this coming Friday night, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. Hallelujah. You will not be um, upset if you come. You'll probably find out later on you would have been upset if you didn't come. So praise the Lord. God is good. Let's go right into our Bible study. We're going to start tonight on expecting the supernatural. Everybody say expecting the supernatural. Mark 16, verses 15 through 20. Um, one of the recordings of the Great Commission. Hallelujah. And um, Mark says here, he says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all, this is after he's risen, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. In my name shall they cast out devils or demons. <clears throat> they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall 
lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Which ones? The one he just said they would do. Okay? Notice here that Jesus commissioned a miracle and sign working church. A supernatural church. Amen. It was to be a supernatural church from the very beginning. All right? These signs shall. Didn't say might. Didn't say could. Didn't say upon occasion. They shall follow them. And they went everywhere preaching the word. The Lord um, confirming, the, uh, uh, confirming the word with signs following. Hallelujah. Again, what signs? Well, in my name. Notice it's in his name. Where there's a supernatural church because of the name of Jesus. They shall cast out devils. Now, literally in the Greek, this says they shall exercise authority over demons. Okay? We got authority over demons. All right? And um, they'll speak with new tongues. Now, one guy used to say, he said that, you know, um, he, he would teach and saying, well, you know, speaking with tongues is that you used to cuss, you stop cussing. Now, getting saved should do that. Okay? Getting filled with the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> you should already stop cussing by the time you got filled with the Holy Ghost. All right? Um, but notice, if you drink any deadly, oh, they'll take up surface. That does not mean snake handling services. We ain't talking about going up in the mountains of, of uh, the western Virginia, West Virginia, and having steak. That's, that's where the, the largest po larger pocket of that is, you know. And they take this verse right here, and they use that uh, to support snake handling in church. That's not what I'm talking about. When Paul was on Alam Letus, he was getting gathering wood. A, a venomous snake came out and bit him, and he shook it off. And they all sat around waiting for him to die. And he didn't. So then they wanted to hear what he had to say. Okay, he didn't go looking for the snake. You know, so if you ever come in here and see a basket on the front platform up here, on both sides. <laughs> Dennis started shaking his head back there. No. <clears throat> that, um, Sonny Bagwell and the uh, Sunlighters went up to a church up in West Virginia. He said that so far back in the woods, they had dropped uh, extension cords two miles. And he said they got in there and they got up on the platform of the pastor, you know, before the service. And, um, you know, and the service starts going. He looks at and said, well, what, what are them baskets for? He said, oh, you'll find out. And they got to go and got to go and get in some old, what Brother Hagin used to call Pentecostal rock and roll worship. You know, they got to rolling in there. And somebody ran up front and went, woo, and threw that off and grabbed out a rattlesnake and started dancing around. He leaned the pastor and said, well, back door. He said, don't have one. He said, where do you want it? <laughs> he gave me, make them one. Hallelujah. No, this is not, remember, remember Jesus and the devil in the 40 days of temptation? When the devil said, throw yourself off this pinnacle, uh, the pinnacle of the temple, for it's written, the angel shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said, it's also written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Those churches that handle snakes, I'll go right to the next verse. If they drink any the dead thing, it shall not hurt them. Give them a bottle of strychnine and pass around anybody drink out of it. Don't do it. My disclaimer is don't do it. We don't tempt God. We don't do things that are foolish in order to prove we have faith. All right? This is not, it's not even what Jesus was talking about when he was given this commission to the church. He was talking about accidentally drinking something poisonous, getting bit by a snake accidentally. Okay? You can claim immunity in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
um, to drink any deadly thing and shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So everything in this sign list is supernatural. Speaking in tongues is supernatural. Casting out or exercising authority over demons is supernatural. Being bit by a snake and claiming immunity in the name of Jesus is supernatural. Drinking something deadly. I mean, like, you know, how many of you ever seen the old Westerns? They're out there riding around. They ain't, they're in the desert. They've been through the desert on a horse with no... Okay. All right. They're out in the desert. Probably didn't trigger. All right. Okay. How many, how many of y'all never saw Roy Rogers? His horse was Trigger. Did y'all know he had... Uh, took it to a taxidermy after Trigger died and had him stuffed, and he actually had him in his home? <laughs> he loved that horse. <laughs> Apparently. That was a big taxidermy deal, Bill. Okay. Um, and they had the, the water. The guy goes there and starts drinking out of it. And next thing you know, he's dead. It had arsenic in it. Okay. He didn't deliberately drink it to knowing it was arsenic. He drank it because he was thirsty. But it was, it was deadly. And that's what he was talking about. Something like that, you claim immunity in the name of Jesus. Okay. And um, then he went on and said, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So he's saying that laying on, the, laying on of hands is a supernatural sign that follows the preaching of the word. This was not, as some tried to purport, simply an apostolic age commission. Going all the world and preach the gospel, he did not qualify it. He did not limit the parameters of it to only the apostles. And these signs shall follow them that, what? Them that believe. So who qualifies? A believer. The gospel has been preached to them, and they believe. Therefore, these signs follow them that believe. There is no calling back. There is no time limit placed on this in Scripture. Okay? You know, it's not like the uh, continuing resolution they're trying to pass in Congress right now. You know, to keep the government running for 30 days. Okay. On borrowed money, either way. You know, and at the end of 30 days, whatever they voted on is over. Well, see, we don't have a, a, a time constraint on this commission. It's for the whole age of the church. We are to preach the gospel and have signs following us. And the problem is, it, the enemy has slipped in over, over the ages and taken away the anticipation of having signs followed. Okay? And came up with all kinds of reasons that signs won't follow the church. Jay, can you help me out here? I want to put this down on the floor. Thank you. All right, there we go. Especially in Bible study, I like to be down here where I don't have to keep going up down that step. I know it's not a lot, but I'd really be down here. Okay? And they started coming up with different, you know, theological perspectives, you know. And, and the biggest one has always been the day, the, uh, the day they had the canonicity of the Scripture. The other one is the day the last, it was apostolic, so the day the last apostle died. So those are two main arguments against an ongoing sign church. Now, what do you mean? You know, they say, well, this was a commission to the apostles. But that's not what he said. When you read the scripture, it says these signs shall follow them that believe. It didn't say the apostles. Amen? Okay. It didn't say the apostles. It said the believers. So any, anyone that comes to faith in Jesus Christ and is born again qualifies to have these supernatural signs following their life. Isn't that good to know? All right. The other argument is um, the canonicity of Scripture. And, you know, canonicity came, kind of became a theological term, and it came from the Hebrew canon, K-A-N-O-N, because that's a transliteration. Um, and it, it was, you know, how I many of the Red Sea is also called the Sea of Reeds? Okay, and there were reeds or 
like, like cane, and they would cut those and use those as a measure, measurement. You know, they would have it a set length, and that would be your standard measure. It was, and so that term, that, that using that, that, re, that read as a, and they call it a canon, you know, became canon. So the scripture, you had the canon of scripture. It was a full measure of scripture. All right? And so I, I believe the Council of Laodicea, 400 A.D., somewhere around there, is when they canonized the New Testament. Okay? I believe, I believe that's the, I could have the wrong city, but um, I'll have to go back and look up my, and re, that's not something I sit around and think about, you know, where, where they canonize scripture, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Cause, and they use Paul's statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, when I was a child, I thought I was a child, I spake as a child, but, you know, okay. But when the fullness of time came, you know, whatever, he says, they, they say, that's Paul was saying we had canon. When the canon came, we wouldn't need the miracles anymore. I mean, I, I, sometimes I, the, the elevation of stupidity to come up with some of this stuff just amazes me, okay? So they're saying, when we had the full measure of Scripture, when they determined, can you imagine miracle signs and wonders going on in the church, and the guys are sitting around a table? Who has looked up to find out what city it was in? Huh? What the, was, the, was it around 400 A.D.? Okay. okay. 47 years after his crucifixion, burial, and resurrection, they're all sitting around a table somewhere, all right? And they're going, we accept Paul's, the, the first and second Timothy as Paul in canon. We therefore canonize it. Basically, the letters we have from Paul, we've canonized them. James, well, we're still debating on James. Okay? And they're all sitting around this table, and they're, they're going back and forth and giving their reasons why this particular uh, book letter, really it's a letter, epistles letter, was canon. You know? And people out there, they're preaching the gospel all over the world and laying hands on the sick and casting out devils and speaking in tongues. You know? Got bit by a snake and he shakes it off and he's you know he got him he's his name all the things are going on place all over the the, the the evangelist world gavel they finally go okay we determined that James is canon and he goes bam and another guy gets by a snake and goes in the name of Jesus I shake it off and he goes boom why because we got canon. What year? Okay. Katie. Canonize the scriptures. Okay. And of course, they probably had other arguments over the next few years fighting over whether or not this was canon still, really. So we ended up with the apocryphy. <laughs> you know, we ended up with that. You know, to the evangelical world, good books to read, but not necessarily canon. Like the book of Susanna and 1st and 2nd Maccabees. Okay, we have those books that are not, if you get a Catholic Bible, they are in there as canon. All right? And uh, so anyway, um, think about it. Hundreds of years later, the church has been assigned to one the church, and one day they got, they said, this is the Bible. Boom, it all stops. Because that is that which is perfect. That's just silly. I said, no, having the scriptures canonized, I'm cool with that. I'm fine with that. I believe we, you know, it's good to have what we have as the word of God, the, you know, the erroneous word of God. Now, understand that the vast majority of newer translations beginning in the late 1800s after the Revised Standard Version came out, almost all of our newer translations are based on the RSV. Okay, which was based on the minuscule uh, manuscripts or the minor text, not the majority text. And so that's why the King James oftentimes will disagree 
or they disagree in some passages where they leave out whole passages. Okay? That's why I still use the King James as my base. I get a lot, you can get a lot of insight from a lot of different scriptures, but when they leave out whole passages because they say, well, that wasn't in the, that's, in the, that's not in the minor text, so we're not using it. Okay? I stick with King Jimmy. Now, be it as it may, you may. Okay? It's the, it's the abridged amplified. I wouldn't even waste my money. Just go get a, go get a classic and keep buying that one. Okay? Because they just, they just shortened it up. It's like some people call it, the amplified is also called the women's version. Come on, Janice, you know that's funny. <laughs> Jerry's just sitting there, I ain't getting in that. I ain't getting in that. <laughs> it's funny. Come on, guys. All right. And um, how did I get way off on all? I got way over there on that, didn't I? Okay. Oh, because we got, we had the cannon. But the canon recorded what Jesus said. It is a stretch to take what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 and stretch that into that pa passage as being the canon of Scripture. I didn't mean to get into a Bible lesson here, but I think it, it's, it, the point being made is, is valid. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 real quick. Don't mean I'm going to leave real quick. Let's go there real quick. Okay. And we'll just go ahead and jump down to eight. We're not going to read the whole love part, which is great. But um, King James, charity, which we know in the Greek is agape, so it is the God kind of love, never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, okay, that's where they say, this is referring to canon, the canonosity. Then shall be done away, which is in part, well, then which that, that which is in part shall be done away. Well, that would make sense if he didn't write some more stuff. You could, you could probably get away with it if he didn't write more. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I also know. Listen. Then shall I also know, even as also I am known. Now wait a second. He said that when the perfect comes, you will know even as you're known. That is not just having a Bible. Because you don't know as you're known. You spend the rest of your life studying the Bible and won't have full revelation of everything it means. When, when is that? John says something interesting. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Wow. That is knowing even as you're known. You will, then we shall be like him. First John. When he shall appear. Aren't you glad I can't really whistle good? You'll make it more annoying. Okay. There we go. 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now, listen to this, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear. So when did John set this place of knowing even as you're known? When he shall appear, we shall be like him. For... We shall see him as he is. So between what Paul said and what John says, you got it discounts that theory 
that what Paul was saying was about the canonicity of Scripture. Guys? That you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He writes that to the church at Corinth. Yeah, yeah. The gift will be a manifestation until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So here, that's why we have to take all Scripture in, within context of other Scripture. You can't come up with a theoretical position on something that other Scriptures will repudiate. But it has been centuries long now that all the manifestations and gifts of the Holy Ghost have dissipated and ceased. Sorry. I normally, actually, I've, been, I've stopped bringing my phone out with me, and uh, I forgot to put it on silent. I'm, I apologize. Okay? Um, sorry, folks. <laughs> so somebody comes up with a theory and goes, we're going to explain away manifestations of the Spirit. Where did that come from? The devil. It's a doctrine of devils. They bought into it. Hello? They bought into it with their mind and not their spirit. And so they have completely called for the, called for the ceasing, a cessation, of supernatural signs and wonders in the church based on a vague interpretation of a scripture that has no supporting evidence. As a matter of fact, other scriptures repudiate that position clearly. So can of scripture is not it. He told the apostles to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, the, uh, and these signs shall follow them that believe. So it wasn't limited to the apostles. So it wasn't going to cease the day the last apostle died. That's just foolish. Hello? That's, that's when they went to them theological cemeteries. I mean, not, uh, you know, instead of seminaries. I've, I've heard more people talk about it. they went to, went to a, a seminary and went in excited about God, full of faith, excited about serving God, and went in and they killed every bit of it. Killed every bit of it. Explained away all the signs and wonders of the Bible. Hello? Okay. So we have, the, we have, you know, different revivals through history. The last, I mean, worldwide crazy change of the whole thing, revival was Azusa Street. They brought the, the Pentecostal, the, the return and the restoration of the gifts of the Spirit, uh, followed by a healing revival and the restoration of men got involved and started teaching stuff that wasn't Bible, and it, it suppressed what God was trying to do. And we're still recovering from that. That's okay. Because he's stirring things up. I said, he's stirring things up. And our churches have gotten cute, you know. And we're, all, we're, we're more concerned about, you know, tunics and bedhead and skinny jeans and light shows and, you know, uh, radical worship and all this kind of stuff than being a supernatural church. Okay. So let's, let's go back to what we know works. Well, the, method, the methods change. If your method suppresses the supernatural, it's not a God method. Oh, we got people coming in. But to the seat is not the goal if they're not being filled with what they need to be filled with. Hello? You can get people to come in for anything. We could probably out say, um, well, they're not around anymore. Let me find some, some old rock group. Advertiser coming over to the Expedition Church. And you have all kinds of people show up. Wouldn't darken the doors of a church otherwise, but they'd come in there for ZZ Top or whatever. Okay? So we're looking at an age that has become consumed with an advertisement mindset for the church. And I'm telling you, we have got to move... We advertise. We, we do things. We, we, you know, we will put banners up. I get all of that, okay? We, we change everything to appease to a generation, okay? That generation don't need you being like them. They need the love of God and the demonstration of the Spirit. They need to encounter a true and a living God that can change their life. 
not whether you can be like them. Hello. They are not impressed by an old dude in skinny jeans and a tunic top. And I don't blame them. That is not going to touch their heart. They're not going to be impressed if you go shoot up with them. Come on now. If we're going to do everything else like them, let's go shoot up with them, let's vape with them, let's smoke dope with them and, you know, be like them. What they need is to encounter the supernatural God who can, only he can transform their life. Their life, their life is not going to be transformed because you wore the clothes they wore, because you got pink hair. You got gauges in your ear. No, the guys with the gauges in there and the girls with the pink hair and the tats and the bolts and all that kind of stuff all over the place need an encounter with God. Amen? They're not looking for you to do everything they're doing. Because what what's going on with them? They're searching. They're searching for something. Something that's different than the status quo. And I can tell you what they're not interested in is playing church. Oh, we're radical, man. Dude, we do Jesus worship, man. Now, I know the movie Revelation, Revolution just came out, and there's, a, there's so many cool things that happened in that move. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm, what I'm talking about is this. This whole narrative that we try to do everything like them to be like them to win. Wearing his rabbinical clothing. He wasn't wearing the clothing of the common man. He was wearing teacher clothing. He wasn't like the Pharisees. He was sitting to eat with them and share the truth with them. He healed their sick. He cast out the devils. He raised the dead. All while religion, wearing religious garb. So there's a call in the spirit, and it's beginning to stir. America seems to be the most resistant to it right now. Because it's happening in, in all countries all over the world. There are, there are things happening in those countries, and I mean signs, wonders, miracles, demons being cast out, the dead being raised. I'm telling you, there are things going on. So the church of Laodicea, it's become lukewarm. It's more interested in being tolerant and cool than it is having the supernatural. We want to take the bound and tell them, we identify with you, you're great. They know they're oppressed. But they bought into the lie that allows them to live that way, you know, saying God made me this way, and he didn't. Man, can you imagine being that bound, knowing that, no, really knowing in your heart? We're spirit beings. The Holy Spirit strives with people. He talks to their hearts. And he, he say, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm, I'm the way out of this mess. And then preachers get up at the pulpit going, and God made you this way. So we celebrate your diversity. Somebody sent me a, something the other day about them praying to the spirit of something. The non-gender, non-binary creator. It was the Methodist. It was a, I don't know if it was a Methodist. It was a, it was a quote, minister in a, no, I think it was Methodist. It was a Methodist church. They had their robe on. They had their rainbow flag sash on. And they're praying to the non-binary, non-gender God. And they're taking the very people who need a supernatural church who can cast devils out to liberate them and to set them free and reinforcing their bondage on their lives under the guise and the, the celebration of their Because Jesus said, 
woe be that should cause any of these of any of these little ones to stumble. In other words, those who deliberately do that have a woe be on their shoulders. Unless they repent, they will pay the price. And they took it to reinforce the problem. So what are we going to do? See, we've got to go back to expecting, having the anticipation of the supernatural. That God's working in our lives, flowing through our lives, touching people with these supernatural signs and wonders. Not just here at, Faith, at Expedition Church, I almost said it, but I didn't. You know, I do something for 30 some plus years, it's hard. God, don't forget, the church I was in before we came here to Greensboro was Faith and Victory Church. We were in that church from 1981, and I was, I was at a Faith and Victory Church from 1981 until 2000 and, um, no, 2022. We changed the name. Okay? That's 41 years of Faith and Victory Church. So when it kind of slides out, forgive me. Okay? But here at Expedition Church, there is such a need to have these signs working in the church. The Great Commission was not something the disciples were unaccustomed to. Think about that. They had already become accustomed to seeing signs and wonders working. They, they traveled with Jesus three and a half years. So much stuff happened that John wrote, I, if, the whole, if, if, if the whole world, I mean, that's, if everything that he did was written down, I suppose the whole world itself could not contain the volumes thereof. In other words, there's a whole lot of stuff he did we didn't record. We just record the things that Jesus did, the which if, I, if, if they should be written, every one. I suppose that even the world itself cannot, cannot contain the volumes that contain the books that should be written. Think, think about it. Another translation says volumes. Think about that. We got enough stuff here to go, wow. We're talking about wow to uh, the... Um, 900,000 power. Okay? Wow, 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 wow. They were accustomed to seeing signs and wonders. Yet Jesus, listen to this, yet Jesus saw the necessity to make sure that he wanted a supernatural church. Now let's stop. Let's analyze some of our cliche Christianities. All we need is love. That's, that's not, that's Beatles. That's not Christian. But, you know, then we got the Coca-Cola song. I like to teach the world to see. And per of all the things that Jesus could have said at this great commission, what did he not say? Now, I'm not, I'm not discounting the validity of walking in love. He didn't say go walk in love. Did he? He said, th think of this. This is pretty strong. This charge to them was to preach the gospel. That's preach what the word says. And signs following. He say, he thinks, they've watched him work so many works that John thinks the world couldn't hold the recordings of it. And, I, and he makes it, the way he's phrased it, He's, he's making that as a, um, a strong allegorical type statement. He's not, he's not really saying that. It, he's just saying, you know, like, there's a lot of stuff. He's using that to say he did a lot of stuff that we didn't write down. A lot of stuff. Okay? And Jesus thought it necessary to tell these guys who've been walking with him back to understanding that the church is to be a supernatural church. Amen. The necessity, the, 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 um, not the pressure, but the um, importance of the moment to relay this information. Now, remember, he's getting ready to be, he's getting ready to ascend to heaven. He's leaving them with his glorified body and going to the Father to sit down to make intercession for us. And so his parting word these signs shall follow you and those that believe what you preach. 
he gives these sign that he establishes the sign and wonder church and they go out and they preach the gospel everywhere and the lord could work uh, confirming the word with signs following he confirmed the word with signs following did he confirm the apostles because people Mark says he confirmed the word. He confirmed the word with signs following. We preach the word, he's going to confirm the word. But like everything else, if you don't expect it, it won't happen. There has to be an expectancy, faith. You're, you're, you're full of faith and you want to, you're expecting God to do signs and wonders. You're expecting God to heal. You're expecting demons to bow to your command in the name of Jesus. He told the disciples that signs would follow them that believe. When reading the book of Acts, we can clearly see that they and those saved through their ministries expected the supernatural and they got it. Time and time again, the Holy Spirit manifested himself and wrought miracles in the sight of all present. Revival often followed. Jesus' promise is that we live in Acts, I mean, I'm sorry, Jesus' purpose is that we live in Acts 29, the final chapter of the church, and do the works that he did. Because see, book, the book of Acts has 28 chapters, but it didn't end. That was not the end of what was taking place. Now, look, if you look in your Bible and you go to the right there, the verse chapter, chapter 1, verse 1 of the book of Acts, in most cases it will say the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And that's so wrong. Hello? I said Hello? If anything, it was the acts of the Holy Ghost on the church. Amen? Or the, the young church carrying out through the anointing of the Holy Ghost the works of Jesus. It wasn't the acts of the apostles. There are other people in here who did stuff. Philip had four daughters which prophesied. Amen? Y'all hear you going home. Ananias came in with their hands on Paul, and the, the scales fell off his eyes. Amen. Y'all here you go home. So we're, we're going we're to go through the book of Acts and find some scriptures here um, next week. All right. We are in Acts 29. We're still writing the church history. We're still carrying out the commission of the church. The opening treaties, I believe, I, maybe I pronounced that right. Treatise, treaties, I'm not necessarily an English major. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus. He was taken up into heaven and given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. And they were to go and perpetuate what he did. Go ye into Jerusalem and tarry ye there until uh, the Holy Ghost comes upon you, after which you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, and Judea, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, my reading of that context of that scripture is Jerusalem was one place, Samaria, Judea, Samaria, and the other parts of the world was the other. Oh, wow, well, here's a whole nother thought. Go to your home place and then, the, then everywhere else. Do it in your home place and do it everywhere else. Where you're based out of, do it there and Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the earth. Okay? So here we have, we have this, this evidence building that Jesus anticipated, expected, and ordained, purposed that the church age would be a supernatural age. That the Holy Ghost came to empower the church to do the works of Jesus. Let me 
mean, that is strong. Has the Holy Ghost left? Has he packed up, gone back to heaven, and said they're on their own? Can I ask you a question? If the ministry of Jesus Christ required signs, wonders, and miracles, are you telling me you are so cool and so great and so magnificent you can do it without them? If the, if the apostles of the early church had signs, wonders, and miracles and were winning people to Jesus, are you telling me that now you don't need it because you're cooler than them? Oh, oh, you've got the canonosity. Can I say something? Paul had the canonosity. He was called up into heaven, saw things unlawful to be uttered. Took him the rest of his life to write it out. Amen? Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not. They stoned him to death. He went to heaven, saw all these things in heaven, came back, said, I can't even tell you about it. And spent the rest of his ministry writing letters to the church that unveiled what he saw, the new creation man. The revelation of righteousness. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. And Paul worked signs and wonders. Well, he didn't do much. Oh, yeah, guys listen to him, preach too long, falls out the wind and breaks his neck and dies. Paul runs down, raises him up from the dead, and then goes back up and finishes his sermon. Hello? Uh, he's, like, you know, he's like Peter and John up on the Mount of Transfiguration. They got heavy in sleep. Here's Paul preaching his farewell sermon to them. This guy falls out and, break, and, and, and dies, and he gets raised from the dead. I think that's a pretty big sign. Are y'all here? If Paul needed signs and wonders and miracles, if Peter needed signs and wonders and miracles, if Philip needed signs, wonders, and miracles, oh, Peter, chap Acts chapter 5, and Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. The people giving heed to him, both hearing and seeing the miracles which he wrought. What? Do you mean that the signs and wonders and miracles helped bring them to Christ? Well, the Bible says it did. The Bible says it did. We had actually out yet? What now? Well, like, like, isn't it 5 8? Right in the beginning of Acts chapter 5? Then Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ? No. Okay. The part where it says, and Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ, people giving heed to him, both hearing and seeing. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Sorry. Transpose my numbers. I just realized it. Then Philip went down to Samaria, to the city of Samaria, and preached Christ unto them. The people, with one accord, gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. So he's preaching the gospel. And they gave heed to it, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Well, that goes right back to the commission of the church from Jesus. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. Many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Hallelujah. They took heed to what he spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So you're telling me that God gives us a commission, the apostles, the, that church, the rest of the church throughout eternity until, until Jesus comes back, or throughout the church age. He gives us a commission to go preach the gospel to every creature, get them saved. But he equipped them with something he's not going to give us. Why? So they can be in the you know, the Evangelistic Hall of Fame, the greatest soul winner of all time. Why would God give them? Oh, because he was waiting for the canonosity. <clears throat> Paul preached pretty ding-dang-dong good without New Testament. <coughs> he was writing New Testament. He was just going. And when he quoted Scripture, it was Old Testament. Well, here you're going on. 
and then share Jesus in the middle of it. But somehow in other sense, you know, we got this 380 day, AD date and we get the canonicity, all that stuff. No, 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 and a hundred thousand times no. The church is to be supernatural. The church is to be full of power and the Holy Ghost. The church is to lay hands on the sick. The church is to cast out devils. The church is to carry out what Jesus did. We are to preach the gospel and then have him confirm that word with signs following. And we, as a people, this church right here has to have an expectation and an anticipation that signs, wonders, and miracles are going to take place. Not, we'll see if the pastor's got it today or not. I came to watch. We don't need spectators. We need participators. Amen. We need you full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, stirred in your inner man, stirred for the signs and the wonders, stirred to see Jesus manifest, stirred to see people healed, stirred to see people have the devils cast out of them, stirred to see people walking where God wants them to walk. Because we walked where we were called to walk. Hallelujah. And we're turning the Holy Ghost loose to work through our lives to touch people. Y'all still here? You go home. Amen. And I need me more people hearing this. And I'm going to tell you, church, we have got to move to that next level. We have to step up to that next place. We have got to come with that, that anticipation that God's going to do things. And we're bringing people and saying they need a sign. They need, you know, they, we need to have signs and wonders. To, as we preach, you confirm it with the word. You confirm that word, signs following. And it shakes them to their core because they came into an encounter with the truth, the living, and the most high supernatural God. And they can't shake it. They can't shake it. And in all of that, they experience the love of God. Yes. They experience the love of God. And in healing their bodies. And delivering them from demons. Delivering them from alcohol and drugs and perversions. And the addictions. And God would heal their body. God would cast the de have the devils cast out of them. With lizard face tattoos and everything. He would still cast the devils out of them. And let them experience his love. With the promise of a glorified body that will wash away all the remnants of captivity in their lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to pick up next week and go from here. Amen. Y'all with me? Y'all stirred. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, church. Listen. I know a lot of us are getting older physically. That's not the time clock we're running against right now. The fulfillment of all things, that clock is moving. We've got to get the people. We are not going to change them in this world following a world narrative of how to do it. You're not going to change people because you look like them, act like them, talk like them, and dress like them. They need an encounter with somebody dripping with the anointing of God. Coming on a mission to minister God's life and deliver them. Amen? Hallelujah. The Winfrey's have bought me two prayer cloths. We have two people with stage four cancer. God loves people. Jesus bore sickness and disease and carried it to the cross. Oh, Father, by your great and mighty compassions, we lay hands on these claws right now. 
Hallelujah. We thank you then, the book of Acts, I believe it's chapter 12. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Inasmuch as handkerchiefs and aprons went from him. And when they were laid on the, laid on the sick, the sick were healed and the demon spirits went out of them. And so we lay hands on these claws now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, your anointing flows into it. The healing anointing. And laid on the sick, it dries out cancer. It restores the damaged cells and makes them whole in the name of Jesus. And every floating, free cell, cancer cell floating in the body dies. Every cell with cancer in it, the cancer dies. And God restores the new life, those cells, and makes them every whit whole in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe it, Father. We expect the signs to happen, the signs to follow. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Let's receive our offering for tonight. We're going to go home. It's not real late. Now, I don't know about you. That's some good preaching. Hallelujah. I worked all day. Hallelujah. Yes, Penny. Now go ahead and give your testimony, Penny. Now, was that this year? Okay. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So we had to believe that God does the supernatural. We had to believe that God does the supernatural. See? I see a lot of times when I'm in it, when I lay hands on prayer claws and things like that, and, you know, we don't hear, so a lot of times we don't hear back what happened. Sometimes later, people tell them, Penny's got somebody who rides around, uh, around her, her neighborhood with the prayer cloth from years ago in his pocket. Because he got healed. He won't let it go. <laughs> He's holding on to that baby. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just give the Lord thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father the miracle worker, the mighty one, hallelujah, who does w w good things for people. Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> See, Penny, Penny's like, get me a prayer cloth. I'll get it to him. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for the service, Father. We thank you for the tithing and the giving. We thank you the people as blessed as they sow seed into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're going electronically, go ahead and send that. We just want to let you know we love you, appreciate you. We would love to have you uh, visit with us here at Expedition Church of the Triad. So you can go to our website, expeditionchurch.org. And uh, do we have a QR code on that site that directs people to the church? Okay. okay.
way. So, if on, so on a website, laptop website or desktop website, you need that other, that location thing. Okay. But can we put a tab right on the middle of the front page to say um, directions or whatever and click it and fill it in? Yeah. Okay. All right. Can we get a, on the church, how hard is it to create a QR code? Thank you. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Have a good evening.